Hey guys, Tommy here. In this video, I'll be talking about proof of work versus proof of stake. Uh, these are the two primary, the two current primary methods of essentially securing cryptocurrency networks. And while Bitcoin started with proof of work, it was the initial uh, method, there is compelling argument for proof of stake, and I'll explore that with you guys here. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump into it. Proof of work, uh, essentially relies on computing power to secure the network. Uh, that's how it gains its strength. That's how it prevents people from overtaking the network. So back in the day when Bitcoin started, uh, everyone was running their computers, their CPUs, uh, later their GPUs, and were using those to mine Bitcoin. Uh, all these computers doing these functions were running the same protocol, and basically they're running the same program. And when a block is mined, the program is set up in a way that the computers come to consensus and move on to the next block. With Bitcoin, these blocks occur every 10 minutes. In different cryptocurrencies, they change the block time, sometimes to a minute or two minutes or something like that to make the blocks happen a little faster. Uh, but that's essentially how it started. Um, as things evolved, uh, it became specialized. The mining became specialized, and that's how ASICs arose. ASICs are basically specialized computer chips that are mining cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. There's different ASICs for Bitcoin, and there's also ASICs for like Litecoin and Dogecoin, which use a different mining algorithm. And so that's basically what's going on right now. When you guys hear about you know, the Chinese with these enormous mining farms, they basically have these enormous facilities full of these mining chips that could be like as big as a Walmart or something, you know, and they're all basically mining Bitcoin. Um, secure, they're securing the network. And so their reward for securing the network by providing all that computing power is in Bitcoin every 10 minutes, they receive a block. Uh, the block has currently 12.5 Bitcoins in them. Started at 50 Bitcoins over the past, uh, uh, every four years, basically it drops in half. So it's happened, has had two halvings now. So it's at 12.5 now. Anyway, Bitcoin's around $2,500 currently. So that's, you know, about $30,000 or so you receive every 10 minutes. And so that's why there's a big competition for mining. Okay, so you understand how uh, the mining works and proof of work. Uh, so let's, let's elaborate on that a little more. So it's, it makes the network secure because in order to overwhelm the network and create false transactions, you need, you need more mining power than the rest of the network. You need the majority of the mining power. That's where the 51% attack, as it's called, comes in. Uh, this is very unlikely to happen uh, because in order for that to happen, the miners would have to secure mining power of the majority of the network and they have a vested interest in Bitcoin working well, uh, otherwise it would lose value. So it's unlikely that would happen. So, and to add on that too, even in the circumstance of a 51% attack, uh, you, can, you can only change the upcoming transaction. In order to change transactions that are numerous blocks back or basically a period of time back, you'd have to have enough mining power to secure all those blocks all the way back. So essentially, if you're if you use an exchange or something, um, they will wait for a confirmation or sometimes six confirmations. And the whole point there is they're making sure that all the, the whole mining network has been in agreement for it for at least a little while. And there's innovations on that too. The proof of work is changing, but that is essentially how proof of work works. So uh, next, let's take a look at proof of stake. I actually am uh, a bigger fan of proof of stake for multiple reasons, but essentially the main thing, the difference between proof of stake and proof of work is proof of stake is based on just that, your stake in the cryptocurrency. Uh, I like it a lot more. It resembles uh, current financial models we have today in a very positive way. And let me explain that. In mining, it's like a specialized field within Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Uh, and with proof of stake, it's everyone who has a share of the cryptocurrency has a corresponding say in the cryptocurrency. It's like you have a vote. Think of this. Most people who use Bitcoin um, are not miners. The vast majority, in fact, especially with ASICs, are not miners. So uh, they don't have a say. Even if they, have, if they own, say, 10% of all Bitcoin, they have no say in how Bitcoin is governed. Is that right? I would say no. I'd say if you have a significant stake... Uh, in a cryptocurrency, 
then you should be able to have somewhat of a say in how things go. And I, I don't think it's coincidence that that is exactly how things function in the real world. Um, you know, for to build on that, of course, like let's say a company or an organization, there's shareholders of those companies or organizations. The shareholders elect a board of directors and the board of directors pick who the CEO is and basically how the organization is governed. It makes a lot of sense and that's why that's why that's how things are run today. So proof of stake resembles how things are run today. It makes a lot of sense. Again, if you have if you have a share of a cryptocurrency, I'm sure you'd want to be able to have a say in how you want it to be. At least that's the case I imagine for most people, especially anyone who has a significant vested interest in that in that asset. So uh, there's also other little benefits of proof of stake. You know, it's uh, obviously we're not using all this electricity uh, that doesn't need to be spent. But I'd say that's even like a, not even the major benefit of it. I would say it just makes a lot of sense. Again, mining is the specialized part of cryptocurrency. And just to build on that, we have Roger Veer, for instance, who uh, controls a significant amount of Bitcoin. And he was never involved in mining or probably very interested in it. But because there's like kind of a civil war going on in Bitcoin right now, because he has a significant stake in Bitcoin, he has got involved in mining. I mean, I'm glad he is able to do that for himself in order to create a voice for himself, but he shouldn't have to get into the whole mining industry just to be able to have, you know, a say in how it's governed. Um, and just to, just to add on that too, right now, uh, Ethereum's market cap is around $20 billion. Um, if you wanted to overtake that network with a proof of stake system, you'd need, you know, over half, you need control over over half that cryptocurrency. So over $10 billion worth, you would have to control. That's a huge amount of Ethereum you'd have to control in order to overpower the network with proof of stake. If you control over 10 billion Ethereum or over half the Ethereum, again, you have a big vested interest. You're probably not going to, you know, try to destroy yourself if you control that much. So I'd say this is stronger than proof of work too, because uh, in a proof of work system, which actually Ethereum currently is proof of work, wants to move to proof of stake, uh, I'd imagine you'd be able to get uh, the majority of the mining power in the network for a lot less than $10 billion. So I would actually say proof of stake is stronger than proof of work uh, in terms of security uh, in that regard too. You can overpower the network with less money in proof of work than proof of stake. Uh, all right, so let's see. Just to kind of add on how shareholders would have control over the cryptocurrency and proof of stake, uh, Tezos is a cryptocurrency that, an upcoming cryptocurrency, and they're looking to implement this uh, in a pretty cool way. You basically have delegates. So rather than you having to be there and vote for every issue, you could basically elect or basically give the power of your cryptocurrency to a delegate, and then they're basically voting the way that you'd very likely vote. And of course, you'd be able to expect you should be able to change uh, who you give your voting power to and whatnot. But that's where some of this innovation is going. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to make this video. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. I've seen people hate on proof of stake, and it made me cautious of it for quite a while. Even though I have felt like this for I'd say a couple of years now. Uh, NXT was actually cryptocurrency that proof of stake uh, over three years. I believe it's over three years, right around three years now they've had proof of stake. And I always saw people, you know, getting hit on proof of stake and I'm looking at NXT and it's doing just fine. So, and they haven't had any problems. So you think if there was something wrong would have happened by now. But anyway, the concept of proof of stake makes a whole lot more sense to me too. So, uh, yeah, uh, just in other news, I am getting a ton of questions from you guys and just a ton of comments. So it's, it's kind of overwhelming to be honest. I'll try to get to you guys eventually, just be patient. I'll probably do some Q&A videos later on. Uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys in the next one.